It may seem oxymoronic, but there are rules in warfare. Every once in a while, representatives from the world's militaries get together to make a barbaric practice a little less barbaric. This is accomplished by making certain weapons illegal. Stay tuned until the end to see what popular weapon was recently banned in international warfare. Before we begin, make sure to join our notification squad so you don't miss out on any of our new videos. Now, here are the 10 most dangerous military weapons. are concealed explosives that are triggered by only a few pounds of pressure, like the stepping foot of a human, for instance. They're buried in the ground to incapacitate approaching and unsuspecting enemy soldiers. Unfortunately, it's not enemy soldiers who are the typical landmine victims, it's civilians. The hidden bombs can remain live and undetonated for decades, which means that long after the conflicts for which the landmines were used are over, they're still taking lives. Studies show that roughly 80% of landmine victims are non-soldiers, and the most affected age group is children. For these reasons, a campaign began in 1992 to eradicate landmines from the planet, which was nearly accomplished with 1997's Ottawa Treaty. In that agreement, 164 countries banned the use of landmines in their respective militaries. Included in the treaty are Canada, Ethiopia, Mexico, and Japan. Not included is the United States. The United States is included in the ban of this next weapon, as are 139 other participants of the 1925 Geneva Protocol. This is when chemical weapons were banned in international warfare. The main impetus for this ban was the popularity of mustard gas, a cytotoxic agent that was developed in the 1800s. It was named for its yellow-brown color and its smell that is said to resemble the condiment in question. Mustard gas was first used on a large scale in World War I, especially by the German army against Canadian and British soldiers, and caused blisters to form on their skin and inside their lungs. Victims would at best be incapacitated, and at worst experience an agonizing demise. Their lungs would be so blistered that they would literally perish by choking on their own pus. Since its 1925 ban, most military agencies have been good on their word about refraining from using mustard gas, although there have been many violations to the treaty. ISIS is one organization that still deploys the illegal gas. In a 1979 Geneva Convention, plastic was banned in international warfare. The 125 parties involved in this UN meetup agreed that weapons that utilize non-metallic elements were to be used no longer. The reason is that they can't be detected with x-rays. Non-metallic projectiles made the jobs of medics and doctors a living hell, not to mention the patient, because they would have to search by hand for fragments lodged in the body. So the unnecessary time and suffering were the causes for this ban on plastic projectiles. So just to get it straight, Plastic being used in the manufacturing of weapons isn't outlawed. Anyone aware of how weapons are made knows that there is a lot of plastic involved. It's the use of plastic in the destructive element of the weapon that is outlawed. In the same Geneva Convention where plastic projectiles were outlawed, so were flame projectiles. These are called incendiary weapons and include flamethrowers. Flamethrowers are only prohibited if they're used against civilians or enemy soldiers in close proximity to civilians. These rules apply to all other incendiary weapons, including napalm and white phosphorus. A unique incendiary device developed by the United States military during World War II was the bat bomb. A pre-Hiroshima plan to defeat the last Axis power was to train bats to deploy firebombs in the paper and wood constructed cities of Japan. The bats, wearing collars containing a napalm-like agent set to a timer, would be released at dawn from a certain location and would fly to the nearest city to roost in people's attics under their eaves. Then the collars would detonate, destroying the bat and whatever building the bat decided to roost in. The government spent $2 million developing and testing the weapon, and were planning to use it for real. But like we said before, after the atomic bombs were dropped, the bats were no longer needed. Lasers are mainstays of military and police forces, mostly for the purpose of aiming weapons. But there have been lasers manufactured for several decades that can cause permanent blindness. However, these have been banned by the United Nations since 1995. There is a very unique clause of the prohibition, however, which states that if the lasers used in battle just happen to cause blindness, this is permissible. 
Another interesting condition of laser weapons is that they're allowed to cause temporary blindness. This is the function of dazzlers, which use intense radiation to cause flash blindness in enemies to temporarily disable them. You can't claim that the smallpox blankets gifted to the indigenous Americans by the British Army was accidental. This is one of the most famous cases of biological warfare in history, which today would be considered a war crime, the same with the use of any other biological weapon. Such weapons are defined as infectious organisms, like bacteria, viruses, and fungi, used for the purpose of incapacitating or slaying opponents during war. These have been banned since 1975, but were used in a abundance in modern history, especially during World War II. The Japanese military was very fond of biological warfare. Soldiers filled wells in Chinese villages with cholera and typhus, and once dropped fleas infected with the bubonic plague on a Chinese city. But the Allies weren't above using biological weapons. They were planning on mass-producing anthrax, brucellosis, and botulism to be used the same way that Japan used fleas. But the war ended before this became a reality. Biological weapons predate the smallpox blankets and were used long before germs were even discovered, like during the Mongol siege of the Crimean city of Kaffa, circa 1346. This next weapon is more esoteric, but it gave South Vietnamese and American soldiers a hard time during the Vietnam War. It was known as the punji stick and was banned in 1980 along with many of the unconventional weapons you've already seen. Punji sticks were simply bamboo stalks sharpened to a point and made into booby traps throughout the dense jungles of Vietnam. Often just a stick protruding out of the ground could be enough to disable an enemy soldier, and consequently the entire battalion, as it would pierce his leg and make him immobile, forcing other soldiers to carry him to safety or for valuable time and resources to be expended to have him airlifted. A more dastardly use of the punji sticks was to place several of them pointing upwards in a trap dug several feet in the ground. The trap would be covered in foliage so that an unsuspecting soldier would fall into the hole and be impaled by the sticks. Once you were impaled, there was no hope of escaping on your own, leaving soldiers to perish accompanied by despair and agony. Let's talk about hollow point bullets. These projectiles differ from regular bullets because they expand when they hit a target, creating a larger surface area and a larger wound as they pass through tissue. Therefore, they are far more deadly. For this reason, hollow points and all other expanding bullets were banned in international warfare in 1899. However, they are still legal in many other areas. Hollow points are common among hunters and law enforcement officers due to the fact that they are much more likely to render a target deceased if the situation demands it. There are many ways you can make bullets more deadly, and most of these have been banned. Another bullet accessory is poison. In the Middle Ages, when guns were not really known for their power or accuracy, it was beneficial for soldiers to soak their bullets in toxic substances, so that when their bullet hit a target but didn't cause much damage itself, the complementary poison would be the destructive pinch hitter. If you're wondering what kind of substance soldiers used, it's the same kind that was rubbed over the punji sticks. That's right, feces again. And if they weren't enthused about the idea of using their own feces, soldiers could use corpses. Storing bullets inside the bodies of fallen soldiers would have the same infectious effect for anyone unlucky enough to be hit. This practice was so vile that it was banned during the world's first arms agreement in 1675. In 2010, an international law was enacted banning the use of cluster bombs. You can probably guess by the name what a cluster bomb is, but we'll explain it just to make sure that things are clear. Instead of a single projectile, cluster bombs are comprised of multiple mini bombs, a cluster if you will, which act like fireworks when deployed. The hundreds of bombs explode in different locations, allowing for a range and diversity of impact not matched by any other weapon. But the savagery of such a device is obvious. Hence why 120 countries agreed on the prohibition of the weapons during warfare. Since cluster bombs detonate indiscriminately over a large area, civilians are at a high risk of being unintended targets. This applies long after a bomb is dropped, because those bomblets that never exploded will act like landmines waiting for an innocent person to unknowingly set them off. Suffice it to say, you're not going to get any disagreement from us on the cluster bomb ban. That's all for the 10 most dangerous military weapons that are now illegal. What weapon do you think should be banned? 
Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.